Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is July 28th of 2018. It's uh, almost, well, just after 2 a.m. <clears throat> I'm feeling a little bit better, and I just wanted to uh, talk with you all. I don't really have any notes. Uh, I have a couple ideas in my head, but I may have... I may forget them by the time I get around to them. Uh, medically, I, I I'm feeling better. Uh, I still have not. I'm still taking an antibiotic. I'm taking two. I'm not taking the powerful one that I took for so long. I've gone to one that's that are two to take care of covering everything. And. Uh, The worst part is, well, the nausea is not as bad. That's, thank God. Uh, my stomach just feels a little bit. I, I can't tell whether I need to put some food, something into it, or whether it doesn't want anything into it. Uh, my sense of smell is heightened. I can have orange juice glass over sitting over here that has a little orange juice left in it and the smell is or I can have uh, a glass of a, that I've just about finished of grape juice or something and the smell is just overwhelming from it but it's tied in I guess with the taste <laughs> I cannot taste some of the things uh, I'm told that's going to go away I hope so because it makes it's, it's difficult. I worked with a guy back in the 1970s that uh, a U.S. Army veteran. He fought in uh, Korea and Vietnam. In Korea he was bayoneted. In uh, Vietnam he was shot in the face, or maybe it wasn't shot, maybe it was shrapnel or something. Uh, he had no sense of smell and it affected his, he really had no sense of taste although he said that uh, he could uh, sort of imagine, if he knew, you know, it, he could just sort of, but uh, we were working hospital security together, and then we worked uh, day shift, and uh, we worked Saturday and Sunday, and, uh, well, we worked other days together, but that was, uh, uh, But I remember once the fire alarm went off, I responded. He got there before I did, and he was telling me, it was in the area of the personnel department, and he was saying, well, I don't smell any smoke. I think everything's okay, and I got there. Of course, I came up about that time, and then as he walked away or whatever, you know, I said, I kind of laughed or something, and I said, yeah, you can't smell smoke, and he said, yeah, that's right. Um, so those things are very, uh, you know, tied together. Uh, his par his problem was permanent. I don't know if he got disability for you know retirement disability for that or not. I'm not sure. I mean, a little bit of disability or something. It would be a permanent disability, and it could affect could affect a lot of things. Uh, so I'm. I'll be so glad when I can taste things. Last night, uh, my son and my daughter, Hillary and James, I guess I should have switched them around since I, you uh, know, the names, um, they ran over to Sonic and picked up uh, malts. And I got a stra strawberry malt. I don't remember ever getting a malt from Sonic, which is right across the street, you know, a couple blocks away before it was delicious it that I could taste taste it all that was really great anyway uh, enough of that I have well back sort of on the subject uh, I've been pretty much down and uh, just I hate being uh, 
in in the position that I'm in of having to depend on my uh, family to you know to help me out. And uh, but they've you know they've stepped up uh, to it and uh, done more than they you know than they should. Uh, it's you know in getting food, uh, trying to find stuff that I can I can eat. Uh, I guess I'm back on the medical thing again. Uh, Hillary has picked up watermelon, and that's. That's been great, and that taste—that taste I get, uh, stuff like that. Anyway, I want to talk about some other things. Um, I finally did a search for national, and I don't think—I don't think that I think this must be it, but changed or something or other. Uh, I'm seventy-seven years old, and I went to Catholic uh, schools, other than. No, grade school and high school. Went to Catholic schools. And, uh, boy, we spent an awful lot of time uh, collect, collecting newspapers so the school could sell it and get money. Uh, going around selling candy bars to neighbors and f family and neighbors. Selling other, anything, you know, we were, I guess all those Catholic kids probably turned out to be salesmen, but we had to do that because the school needed money. We didn't have, didn't, there was no tax money that went to, you know, anything except public schools. They didn't go to Catholic schools or uh, if there were any Jewish schools around or Baptist school, you know, it didn't go, it didn't go to that. They didn't get any assistance either. So my parents paid taxes, and they also paid, you know, the Catholic school so much a month or whatever for me to, uh, and for other, you know, Catholic kids. Or, you didn't have to be Catholic, though. They had school would have taken you. But, uh, uh, so, but the one thing that, so we missed out on a lot because you know, public schools had more programs and had had money, and our schools didn't. But the one thing in high school that we had the National Merit Scholarship, and I'm guessing this is the same thing, but from reading a little bit of this, it looks like it's changed. Um, so in the junior year of high school, all across the United States, on the same day, at the same time, schools took this test. I don't know if it was mandatory or if it was just uh, recommended. Maybe some teachers out there, especially old teachers, uh, can fill me in on, and on, maybe on the change on this. But anyway, uh, so we all took the test, and then, uh, so that had been in like 1950. Eight junior year for me, for us, for everybody. Um, so you took the test, and then it was graded, and it, I guess they must have had IBM punch cards or something or other, because it came back like a, you know, a sheet, fold-out sheet, little thing. You know, something done by a computer. Uh, And that really, for me, was, well, of course, I knew I wasn't the, <laughs> the brightest uh, pencil in the box. Does that make sense? Or the, the sharpest pencil? I guess that would be it. I know I wasn't the sharpest pencil in the box. But it came back, and uh, because I was in high school, and we, as I mentioned before, there were four homerooms each year. And so when I started there, my freshman year, I was put in one of the two, nobody ever said it, but I mean, I knew it. I guess everybody else did too. There was two rooms, home rooms of smart kids. They took Latin and uh, geometry and trigonometry and uh, stuff like that. 
and the other two homerooms we took typing uh, general math uh, stuff like that of course we took religion every year too you know but uh, Two, you could also tell because like when the different religious orders, you know, Roman Catholic Church religious orders, when the Jesuits would once or twice a year send somebody to the school to talk to, and they went to, you know, around, I'm sure to all of the schools, Catholic schools, you know, when the Jesuits or the uh, Benedictine or uh, whatever would show up, most of the time they didn't show up for our <laughs> They go talk to the, uh, try to recruit, you know, from the smart kids. And I don't blame them. But uh, uh, sometimes they would, they'd pop in to talk to us. Don't think they were trying to recruit us, just maybe trying to see what, uh, who they were excluding, you know. So this was uh, really the first, well, this is the first written, I, I never, I've never had, and I'm 70, really I've never had an IQ test. Uh, this wasn't an IQ test, but I never had an IQ test, but I did the uh, IQ test online when the, you know, the internet came around and when I was blogging and to a written blog and everything and I mentioned my, my I would take this, the line and the, put a link to it uh, so other people could then I put my score and I forget what my score was but it was just slightly up in, above the middle you know just uh, I forget what the number was um, but anyway in high school so I got this man that had a graph on it and, and numbers and you were compared in this paperwork you were compared against your classmates or maybe it was your everybody in your at, at that school, and then it was compared. <clears throat> you know, by you were compared against. I'm not sure if it had been like state, and then national, but that you were compared, so you could see. So anyway, I looked at the uh, I looked at the thing when they passed it out, and then I saw you know well, just above average, and that's. That's fine with me. That's what I expected, you know. Uh, but then I saw uh, <clears throat> when the graph goes, it would because it it would tell you where you stood, you know, and uh, like on this shows you the all together when all, all the components are put together, it shows you, you know, well, you're a little bit above. I was a little bit above fifty against my fellow class people in my school, my state or whatever and against the ones in the United States and then I looked over and this graph thing goes down here and I'm saying to myself Jesus I guess I'd have said Jesus Mary and Joseph you know I don't know but I said <laughs> I said well man you know like 95 percent of other students are better than I am at this subject and then you know what is the subject Mathematics, oh God, yeah. Uh, so, but then I looked, and the thing went way up there. As far as the one went down, this one went all the way to the top, and like I was, you know, ninety-five percent. I was on top five percent or something like that in that category. And so then I looked to see, you know, what is the category? And it was the ability to read, but it was the ability also to understand what you read and to forget how they put it, uh, pull out to be able to reject uh, they wouldn't mention propaganda the ability to, re to reject. Uh, Propaganda to be able to understand, you know, to pull out information by by doing it. I thought, yeah, that's pretty neat. But I really didn't realize till later on how neat of a asset that that was. 
uh, the ability to have. Uh, now I was, because of my hearing loss, I was a terrible speller. And it, actually the last year of grade school, I didn't even know they flunked kids in grade school, at a Catholic school, you know. Uh, because we had a, a fellow classmate that moved along with us who I'm not sure now what I can say, you know. I think what I would say would be now considered inappropriate to say. I've said it before, but I'll skip it this time. No use to piss off some mother and father or family member or somebody, but he was a nice, uh, nice young man, but he just, it was Catholic school and he just moved along with us. I don't remember him going to summer school, but for my last grade of high school, or for my last grade of grade school, I was sent to Redemptorist High School for summer school for reading. And that was because I was poor at spelling. And so the nun over there who had a, a class of us from different schools said, uh, well, people who can't spell are people who can't read. So we're going to be reading books all this summer. Well, I didn't have any trouble reading at all. My problem was hearing loss in both ears, pretty severe. And nothing, my parents didn't really have my hearing checked or anything like that. I just had that all my life. But uh, I think I bet you I was reading probably better than the nun who was sitting there. I had no trouble reading at all. And all through high school and later, they, that's before the internet, uh, I ordered so that I couldn't get information from Wikipedia or whatever. There was no Wikipedia. I ordered in. I didn't read my, when I went to high school, I didn't do the, the stuff that I was supposed to be doing. I carried those books home, probably caused curvature of the spine or something, carrying all those books home every day. Why I didn't leave them in the locker, I don't know. I never opened them. But I ordered in a uh, government printing office. The United States had a government printing office, and they, you could get uh, all types of material. And I ordered in, especially, uh, field manuals from the, uh, for the Army field manual on, on how to survive in the desert, how to, you know, a field manual on how to survive in Arctic weather, a field manual, that type, and I read those. Also, uh, when I was in grade school, or I know now, or, you know, in recent years, uh, people have talked about how important it is to, for family members, for mother and father, or whoever, to read to young kids. Uh, I think they're talking about really young kids. But for two years, my mother's mother, I called my mother and father, Jim and Betty. My mother's mother, because I'm sure my mother called her mother. Uh, I called her mom, or my mother would have called her mom. And I called my grandmother mom. She lived with me for, lived with us for two years. She had total heart block, and she had that uh, since my mother was little. And they didn't expect my grandmother to live very long, but she lived long enough for my mother to grow up and get married and lived long enough to move in with us uh, for... Uh, probably the second and third grade for me. Um, pretty sure it was the second grade because I flunked at the second grade and uh, I remember second grade, that was first, that's when my grandmother moved in with us. That's when, uh, and she was addicted to phenobarbital because of her uh, complete heart block. 
and she would take too much of her phenobarbital. So in a second grade or whatever, my, my, it was my job to dole out phenobarbital to my grandmother when it was time. So I'd stay close to home and she would ring her bell when she thought it was time and then I would check and make sure. But she read to me. She had arthritis really bad. And she read to me all of the, you know, uh, Moby Dick, Count of Monte Cristo. She read all those things to me. Um, So why did I get on this subject? I do not, don't remember. I think I wanted to point out that uh, I had some deficits in like mathematics. I improved in mathematics because I had to when I was working as a welder a little bit to be able to read blueprint. You know, I took a course in reading blueprints and that type of stuff. Also, when I got married, my wife had just started up a tropical fish shop, and so I ended up, you know, having to work at the tropical fish shop. And, uh, you know, although my wife at the time, you know, she did the pricing and that type of stuff, but I had to sell stuff and make change and that type of stuff. And so I improved in, you know, mathematics or whatever, but. Uh, I had had deficits in uh, certain areas, but I managed to work, you know, around around them. The um, back to high school. I want to mention something else too, and I think I might have mentioned it. Maybe not. I know in my blog I mentioned. I want to jump. Don't let me forget has to do with nudity. So don't let me forget, but I want to talk about, uh, well, now I can remember what I want to talk about next, but I can't remember what I was going to talk about. Anyway, if you're in, uh, one, if you're in Europe or whatever, you look at the United States like, oh my God, those people are so, they're so crazy. They're so upset over nudity. They're, they just have all these hangups and although probably, <laughs> probably the United States is, especially in the religious, in fact, it's been, it's been discovered because you can tell with the internet, you can tell what sites are getting traffic and, um, data moving back and forth and all that kind of stuff. And of course in the conservative, religious, let's say Southern Baptist areas or whatever, the people are, they're hitting the porn big time. Not so much in California, not so much in New York, not so much in Democratic, you know, it's supposed to be uh, the bad people, you know. But uh, so, if you were outside the but outside of the United States, you'd be, you'd be surprised, I think. But the thing is, you'll be surprised in the United. The American people will deny. It. If you did a poll, you know, talk about fake news and that type of stuff. If you did a survey and ask, uh, was nudity common back in uh, the 1940s and the 1950s and I think even the 1960s at school uh, in uh, swimming and stuff like that? I know because I years ago, like I did a written blog. I still have it, but nobody goes to it anymore. But <clears throat> I brought up and then 
got in there was comments and posts and things like that about it. Uh, you'll see it in some movies, too. Uh, can't remember. One of the movies that you'll, you'll, see, it, you'll see it in is uh, about Catholic high school. And uh, you'll see there that the boys were learning to swim or whatever, that's their thing, and uh, the class is all naked. Boys, of course, not girls there in the class. Boys are all naked and they're going to they're swimming, gonna swim naked in the pool. You'll see other things like that in some movies uh, like that. Um, and I really didn't know about it. My, the first, I didn't know about it when I was, I had a cousin, I had a bunch of cousins, but there was one cousin that was my, through my mother, you know, her brother had three kids or whatever. One was, and Billy was about a year younger than I was. And uh, so I, we'd, get, we'd get together occasionally. And so anyway, my mother dropped me off over at uh, their place for the day. It wasn't, it wasn't common, but she just for some reason dropped me off over there. And so, uh, you know, I went in and Willie was there, Billy's mother, and I, I said, well, I'm here to, you know, I'm not sure whether I said here to play with Billy or what, but uh, she said, oh, uh, well, Jimmy, he's, he's over at the YMCA swimming. And uh, I didn't know how to swim, of course, by the way. I still don't know how to swim. Uh, and she says, why don't you go over and you can, uh, you know, swim over there with him. And uh, I said, well, I, I didn't bring a swimsuit. And she said, oh, you don't need a swimsuit. They don't wear a swimsuit. And I'm not sure how old I was. I'm, you know, young. And I thought, Wow, I'll get to see naked people. I'd never seen naked people before, uh, other than myself. Never saw my parents naked. Uh, there was no internet. So she said, just, you know, go start walking that way or whatever. So I'm walking over that way, but it ended up, then I saw him, you know, coming. So I never got to see naked people. Um, I thought they were they were poorer than we were uh, I was never told that I mean I just knew that they you know uh, so I thought and for years and years I mean I grew into adulthood and everything else and uh, I thought well that's that was good that uh, they could swim at their local YMCA and they didn't have to buy a swimsuit. I thought it was because of that. And then I, on the internet, found started finding some stories and then I, then I blogged about what I just told you. And then people started adding comments that, yeah, oh no. And it was, it was common back then because the uh, filters for the pools and stuff like that they didn't have I guess they had chlorine I don't know but they it, the YMCA and, and the YMCA would be the Young Men's or Christian Association and schools if you were male I'm not sure exactly how it went with the females but they had swim meets and everything and all the all the boys were naked nobody thought anything about it uh, when you went to the YMCA to, if you went to take swimming lessons, you had to swim na naked if you were a male. Um, and then there was even, I uh, found pictures. I'm not sure if people uploaded the pictures or if people, or if I found them and put them in because people were saying, and will still say, never happened. No, that's just, they don't say, it, they're not, they didn't use the words fake news, but it was like, no, that never happened. And so then I put some pictures of taking it 
swimming meets or whatever where all the boys are in the water naked or whatever or getting ready to jump off the diving board or whatever. They're all naked. And I posted the uh, pictures or whatever and people, no, uh, that's photoshopped or something like that. So that's something I wanted to mention because I'd like to hear from you. Well, if you think it's fake, you know, say, hey, I don't, that's not true. You know, if you're somebody in the United States and they oh, that's not true. That never happened. It's just kind of funny that that was normal. Nobody thought anything about it. And now it's, the United States has changed so much over the years that people refuse to accept they just can't believe that that ever that ever happened, and it's funny too that you know the young well, the YMCA Young Men's Christian Association or whatever that they would have been because they had I guess a lot of swimming pools and and not just swimming pools but places where people could go. So how I got on that subject, I do not know. Uh, changing subjects quickly, I told you that I was getting my new monitor, and now I messed up. Uh, it's not going to be here for a few more days. Today's the 28th. I think it'll be here about the 31st. And how I, I thought it had been delivered to the office. And the way that came up is I went to do the tracking, and I had forgot that I'd even ordered from New Egg before. So I saw on the thing that a package had been delivered. I didn't notice that, I didn't pay any attention to the date. It was like last month. And I saw it and said, delivered, well, damn. So I sent my son down there with a dolly and it had, <laughs> that was another item that had come in in the past. Okay, uh, what else? Back to my medical thing. Uh, my temperature is doing just a little bit above. I have stopped taking the water pills because there was there with the previous antibiotic. Um, they did not rep uh, recommend. That's one reason I had to leave AMA. Uh, so I've stopped taking the water pill. My blood pressure and my blood sugar, whatever. I also stopped taking the diabetes medicine because there was also some things. So pretty quick. I think I've only got, I believe, two and a half days more to go on this new medicine that I'm on for the infection. Then I can get back to taking my regular routine. Uh, in about six days or eight days, I'll see my doctor again, and they'll do the lab work again. And I'm hoping then that the high number for the kidney function drops down. I'm hoping, but I don't think it will, that I, I hope, because my, before I went into the hospital, all my lab work was excellent. Blood pressure, diabetes, all those things. As soon as I went into the hospital and the nurses started looking at the monitor or looking at the computer instead of listening to me, they just started, you know, oh, your bladder's you know, full. Yeah, I retain, you know, I have bladder retention. I've had that for, you know, oh, your blood pressure is oh, way up there. We have to put, give you something for your blood pressure. Yeah, my blood pressure is high right now, but that's because you put a catheter in me twice, and I hate, I'm nauseated. I've been nauseated, you know. About when I go home, my blood pressure will be normal, and that's, that turned out to be correct. And they were looking at uh, the kidney numbers and everything, and it was just all they could think about was, "This is high. We got to put something in it to bring it down." So I'm doing better at home, but I'll be so glad when I can taste things. Uh, now some things I can taste. That uh, malt, strawberry malt. Oh, that was great. Uh, water taste 
yucky. Coke. I know I shouldn't be drinking Coke, but I just want to drink a little bit now because it tastes yucky. Um, V8 tastes okay. Orange juice tastes okay, but it tastes so okay I've been drinking a little too much of it. And I think uh, so. <clears throat> that is, <clears throat> I've got a doctor's appointment so I can do the lab work coming up. Then I and on the seventh of see the next August, seventh of August I see the uh, oh man doctor for the prostate problem. I cannot remember that specially. It just blows. Uh, not the orthopedic, that's bones. Oh man, am I getting Alzheimer's? My mother had Alzheimer's. Anyway, um, I think what I'm going to do is if my son wants it right now, give him, he's in the other room, I think I, think I hear him. Uh, going to give him my 4K monitor. I'll hook up my old LG wide monitor, but it's not, it's 25 inches or 27 inches or 29, and the one I'm getting in, in a few days will be a 34 inch wide, but I think I'll go ahead and give this to him if he wants it, and then I'll just hook up my old older wide monitor and I get to do it. <clears throat> so anyway, thank you very much for watching.